Okay, and welcome back uh, to another edition of American Scholars Podcast. I'm your host, Hooch, and with me today I have Gordon, Tim, and Hillary. Um, an unbelievable day if you're a Reds fan. Um, I had an outside bit of confidence that we would make it a game. Um, maybe we'd get one or two. I The way it shook down, to, if you would have told me you know, we were going to win 4 nil at home, in advance, and we were going to hold Barcelona to no goals. I would have n- probably not believed it. I was hoping for a respectable showing, um, but I'm over the moon, which I'm sure you guys are. Uh, so there's really no preparation to this. This is just going to be a, a type of roundtable discussion. I think Gordon said that in the group chat. Where we're just going to just full out of motion, nothing scripted. We're just going to speak from the heart, celebrate, and uh, – so let's just go with uh, Gordon. Your thoughts? Like, what what were you thinking today, bud? Uh, yeah, pretty much similar to you. I wanted to go um, early. I wanted to at least have a clean sheet in the first half, um, enough to to make Barcelona fear um, that there was a possibility they wouldn't get out um, of Anfield alive. That was all I all I was hoping for. I just wanted wanted to make it interesting. Um, I just wanted to enjoy the game and, you know, maybe we just beat it at home. But uh, I honestly did not expect to go through. I thought that after yesterday's uh, Man City Leicester game and this one had just been um, kind of a rough week ahead for us. But man, I, I'm still shaking. <laughs> uh, Tim, what was your thoughts? Uh, I, I think we talked like earlier. In the day, I mean, this is probably the most relaxed I was going into a game, and by the 60th minutes, I was having a heart attack. So, um, <laughs> like I said, I just did not think. I mean, you, there's always hope. I mean, I always went back to when we played City uh, after winning the first one, three zero, and you know how they scored an early goal, and then let's face it, you know that ball, their ball hit the post and stuff. What if that went in? You know the tide can turn. So you know you kind of like try to make that into a positive scenario for your own team and say, hey, if you get an early goal, you never know. But right before the game or right right about to kick off, my brother like messaged me and said, you know, like, do we have any hope today? And kind of like similar to Gordon, I was like, you know, I don't know if I have hope. Like, you know, I, I mean, I there's always hope. But I don't know if I was very optimistic. I just wanted a good showing, a positive results, at least definitely a win. And, you know, so that, you know, we can show once again that we're back in this, you know, top of the world stage that we're on as a team now. This team is up there. And then, you know, I was telling him, you know, but if you get an early goal, you never know. And as those messages went, were going back and forth, the box scored that goal. But... I mean, what a game. I, I had to have died a couple of times, I would think, in the last 20 minutes watching that game, especially after 4-0. It was even worse almost. But, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It's just one of those days that, you know, uh, this is why you kind of watch the sport. This is why you kind of, like, support a team like this. It's just unbelievable. It's been, I mean, this is goes, and I'm not a young dude by any means, this goes in one of the top two, three games of all time. I don't get teary eyed very often after a game, and I was after this one. Uh, Hillary, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I got off work about uh, ten a.m. Central Time, and I I was on listening to like the soccer radio, and they said there was like a a seven percent chance that we would make it today. Uh, that we would be able to go through, and um, you know, after yesterday, I was. I was feeling pretty down and I just thought, you know, I just want us to keep a clean sheet. You know, if we could score a goal or two and hold them at the three goals that they got in Barcelona, um, I'd be happy, you know, to be able to show that since, you know, we're down Mo Salah, we're down Bobby Firmino and maybe Keita, like, you know, just to be able to, to keep our quality consistent and like playing at Anfield, um and everything like that I never dreamed (laughs) going into it that we would have that that goal in like what was it the sixth minute um it was incredible I mean like going through that first half we were on fire and they just looked uh like they didn't look like 
like how we expected them to look and um yeah it was just it was an incredible range of emotions going from having very little hope to okay you know we're gonna we're gonna maintain you know um some level of of our quality here to we could actually do this you know we we could win this thing and then when it got to 4 0 I was like, okay, we have to get that fifth goal because there's like 12 or 15 minutes left. And if they score, I mean, we're done for, you know, and we, but we kept it consistent and we, we shut them down and they, at no point, there were a few times where it was like, they, they came through, but I mean, Alison was great and it was just, it was magical. Like it was just an incredible experience to go from that, like kind of low, like, you know, just, you know, we're, we're, re- you know, resigned to this to, wow, we're actually going to do it. Um, and then like seeing everyone celebrate at the end, you know, I was crying. It was insane. So. Yeah. So the way I figured is we can get, if we could have got to go in the first 10 minutes, there's still an outside shot. Um, and then. You know, and it almost looked like from the beginning where the Barca players were going down early, trying to get fouls. Like, they were just trying to get through the match. Um, and when we got to halftime, 1-0, I was like, yeah, now it's a tall task. And then you got 45 minutes left. And if you can get one, you know, and put the, really, the pressure really back on them. And then uh, it's poetic justice. Suarez gives Robbo a little donkey kick right before the half into the shin. Robbo has to go out, and then Genie comes on at halftime, and he's the one that scores the next two. Um, it's it's just one of those things. There's no rhyme or reason why it happened. Uh, like Hillary, you just said it's it's a magical. It's and people always it's it. You say about the European nights at Anfield, and it's mythical. Um, there's a legacy to it, and you don't really understand it. Um, for me, I wasn't really – I wasn't a fan in 05, so I didn't get to see the Olympiacos, Gerard's goal, um, 05 in Istanbul, that comeback. My first really experience was three years ago against Dortmund when they came back. And it was cool. It was a Europa League quarterfinal, but you still saw it. And then tonight, you you experienced it 4-0 against Barcelona, who has – you know, they're too deep in every position. And – um. There's just no rhyme or reason why it happened other than it's Anfield and things like this tend to happen there, um, especially without Bobby, without Mo. Um, you know, Divock gets two goals who at the transfer window in January we're asking if we get rid of him. Um, he, he's a cast away, figuring he's not going to be on the side through the summer. And now Everton um, this weekend in Newcastle, two goals today. Um, Jamie, who... He's a quality player, but you you don't you don't expect him to put that forth of uh, showing in the Champions League, and he gets a header and then another goal. Through. It's just and then you know Allison only had to make five five saves today, but all the pressure is really on him because if he lets one goal pass, it's almost insurmountable at that point. Um, because mm-hmm. it, it's just it's I'm speechless because I I still can't believe it happened, and I think that's that's the best part about this is. We all have hope, and yeah, this could happen. We get this goal, it, but then it goes through, and you're just—it's unreal. Um, so we're we'll saying that with um, just a brief look at the stats, we had 13 shots on, goal, uh, 13 shots total, seven on goal. They had eight versus five. Um, they controlled 58% of possession to our 42. In corners, we had seven to their six. So it wasn't like we already dominated the match, and they just sat back. Um, looking at these stats, you would have thought that they Barcelona would have been able to get a, a goal, um, but just the whole team defended. Uh, and the man of the match, you, you know, you guys can speak on this. My four at the top are obviously Genie and Divock with the goals, but Allison, known going in, going into today that he couldn't give up a goal. I mean, I thought Trent played outstanding, um, especially after we went up, uh, we got the fourth goal. His tracking back, he was in front of every cross, every ball, making passes. Just, I mean, just, I mean, you you can't give the whole team the man of the match. But um, looking at the four, I mentioned if you guys want to chime in with somebody else, feel free to do so. But uh, Tim, we'll go with you. Who was your man of the match for today? 
Man, that's a tough one. I think I would. I like that Becker pick just because obviously it's not the obvious one, but he, man, he had some huge saves, and you know this is why you pay so much for a goalie because they can you know save a game, same around, take you to the finals. I mean, I thought he had an excellent game. I mean, if you just look at those stats, and it kind of tells you. This was almost like the reversal of the first game, wasn't it? I mean, it didn't, you know, we didn't, we were definitely physically a lot more dominating. Uh, you could definitely tell Liverpool wanted it more, wanted the ball more. I mean, the running, obviously the crowd helps. But if you think about it, especially in the first half, they had several chances that they could not convert on. And obviously, you know, like Becker is like the, the top guy to stop that. But they had their chances that they did not take. If you look at the finishing today, it was almost like the reversal of the first game. The first game should have never been 3-0 to start with. I mean, let's face it. You know, the gameplay, you know, if you look at those game stats, it's probably, you know, our stats were better. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in terms of player, I mean, you would like to say, I cannot find one guy on the field that didn't, who did not have an amazing game. I thought Shaq in the first half a little bit was trying a bit too hard, maybe, uh, to create something. Had a couple of, like, you know, odd passes. But, I mean, he came through in the second half. I cannot, You cannot find one person on the field who did not deliver at the end of the day. But, yeah, if I have to pick one, which is a really tough thing to do, I would probably say Alisson. Because he, I mean, without those saves in the first half, you know, this run was kind of, like, beyond reach. Uh, Gordon, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I would have to probably give everybody a 9 or a 10. Uh, there wasn't anybody that I thought um, had a bad game. I honestly think Shakir was just said times it looked like his legs were too short to have that he wanted to. Um, he was really unfortunate um, not to get the first goal. Um, it was a piece, of, a piece of great defending at the back post um, that he was slotting through in. Um, and it could have easily been one nothing inside three minutes. Um, I honestly, my man in the match should probably be uh, Rigi. I think the guy has slowly made a case for himself to to stay at the squad and not just um, not just be someone that comes off the bench, but someone that we can rely on. Um, when we, I I think the odds this morning uh, for Liverpool beating Barcelona. Four nothing or uh, sixty six to one. So every horse in the Kentucky Derby had a better chance of winning that <laughs> than we did of, of beating them, and that didn't even factor in. That didn't even factor in the lineup that we had without um, Salah. And things that I had to be a huge effort by everybody. Um, but yeah, I, I would say a region just because I, I think one of the announcers even said it, the man was absolutely shattered. I mean, he, he hasn't played 90 minutes in forever. I mean, he doesn't even play 90 minutes for, for Belgium. So for him to put that kind of performance in, and yes, he was inside, he was between the penalty and the six-yard box when he scored that goal. But it was still one of the most difficult shots I've ever seen taken, and he hit it so perfectly. Because I believe it was uh, PK was even coming in, and it just went between him and the keeper. I mean, he still had to swivel his hips. I, I, that's be, my man in the match would definitely be Rigi. All right, uh, Hill, your thoughts? I mean, I have to agree. I think that Allison and Rigi were both instrumental um, for for all the reasons stated. Um, but I'd have to go with Jeannie. I think that um, as at halftime, he was the impact sub. I, I saw his interview after with BR uh, football where he said he was devastated that he wasn't named in the lineup. And so he came out at halftime hungry. He was told he's the secret weapon. And I mean, he totally was what shifted that game uh, in, in our favor. And um, those two goals were just insane. I mean, it was just awesome, totally unexpected. And I think that um, he's been such a, a key part of our success all season. And for him to have those two goals when he had them in, in the two minute succession, it was just incredible. So for me, it's, it's Jeannie Winaldo, hands down. Okay. Now Gordon touched on that last goal and, uh, let's talk about that for a second. So 
It, you know, you get a corner kick. You look. It looks like everyone's waiting to line up, and they're getting in position. And Trent walks away from it, and it comes back and takes it quickly. And but next thing you know, it's in the back of the net. And I'm going nuts. And I'm like, wait a second. The ref's going to call it back. Something. There was just something that didn't look right about it because you never see that. Um, and then you it flashes to the sideline, and after Klopp's on celebrating, he has this wry smile on his face. Like, it was a play that they put in sometime during the week or maybe they saw something on tape, um, you know, and they were waiting for the perfect moment to pull it out. And then you look at it. So my question to you guys is, is that something that comes in, you know, the Klopp make a motion? Did he call that play? Is it something that he told Trent at that mo- You know, if you guys see this happen, you go to this. But for Trent to be a 20-year-old kid and to recognize that, and Divock, who, you know, he hasn't really played all season – like, you know, the, the, the being rhythm like that, for their, their chemistry to make an eye contact or for something to happen where they see the whole of Barcelona's defense walking up in the presence of mind for Divock to stay on side and then slot it home like he did. Um, just what what is your guys' opinion on that goal? Um, you know, is it something that they put in? Is, if you guys see this, do it. Did Klopp call it? Um, Hillary, we'll start with you on that one. Or, yeah. Actually, I was just watching some, like, post-game stuff, and, I mean, sounds like it was just, like, Trent being Trent at the moment. It's kind of like stuff that you pull off, you know, practice when you're, like, goofing around. Because Klopp said he did not even see the corner kick come in. He just saw the ball going in from, like, Origi's shot. And I guess, you know, Ben Woodburn turned to him and said, what happened? Because they (laughs) didn't, like, see it coming. Uh, So I think it was one of those things, like you say, I'm... You just kind of like do it on the practice field, you know, two guys, you know, like it's just like you make eye contact for a split second and it happens. And it was one of those things. But going back to what you're saying, for a 20 year old kid to kind of kind of see that as he's like taking a couple of steps away to be that, um, you know, like observant and kind of like active in the game. Whereas you have Barcelona on the other side with a ton of experience kind of in the complete opposite. I mean, you are always told as a defensive player, I mean, from, I was actually watching like something that Mourinho was talking about, you know, if this happens in, you know, like Layla's game where they're like, you know, like 13, 14, 15 years old, uh, you would think uh, it's too early in the morning. These kids are not ready to play soccer yet. I mean, it's, you know, like nobody's paying attention because as a defensive player, you're always told to keep one eye on the ball and one eye on the guy you're going to cover. If you're covering, you know, if you're doing man to man for them to all turn around is beyond amazing but for Trent to kind of like recognize that and take action I mean what a great fitting way I guess but it sounded like it was something that you know you know Klopp said they would have to do something cheeky but you know how do you practice cheeky it just kind of happens well that makes it even more impressive than if you know if Klopp <laughs> call you know if for Trent to realize it and Divock to look at and then like you said they make that split eye contact and they pull it off. I mean, that's a one in a million. It's it's if you were to write a movie, that's the type of play that you would write in at the end of the movie for them to be able to pull off. And you'd be like, oh, it's Hollywood. You know, in real life, that doesn't happen. Well, here it is. It's Anfield. It happened. Um, it, unreal. Then, if yeah, if Klopp said that, I didn't get to see that. But if if he said, you know, that's just them playing off instinct, then that's even more unbelievable and uh, adds more to the legend of this game. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing for, I mean, it makes Trent look better. I mean, that kid looks better and better every day, doesn't it? And he's only, I mean, 20, and it's what a bright future we have in right and left. And, you know, it's odd that how Robo's injury uh, kind of, like, came back to, like, bite them in the ass because I was kind of worried when Robo didn't come out in the second half and you had Milner back there. Which, you know, how great is it to have a guy like Milner to be able to go back there? But, you know, you're always worried about Milner's pace, especially with the pace, you know, Barcelona brings to the table. But, I mean, that kind of bit him in the ass at the end by Genie coming in and scoring those two goals. Uh, yeah, I have that written down here. You know, you said the, it's ironic that the Suarez quasi-dirty play that led the Robbo's uh, injury allowed Gene to come on probably earlier than expected, and he scores two just absolute stunners. 
Um, so I, I have a little bit of a, a little note about Phil being continue taking off at the 60th minute. Um, barely heard his name all night. Um, I don't want to harp too much on the negative, but um, you know, from the pitcher earlier that came out today with him and Suarez around the amp- the crest, thumbs up, and you know, maybe it's respect, maybe they're, they're doing a ton in cheek. Uh, and then Suarez saying, you know, if he celebrated or if he scored today at Anfield, that he wouldn't celebrate because he still loves the fans. But in the same breath, he says, well, I don't see why they would boo me because in the four or five years before I got here, they didn't make the Champions League. Um, for those two to be sent back and they can fuck off back to Barcelona. Um, and they wanted to leave here to play in finals and whatnot. And for those two to go back. And I, I put it on Facebook today. I've never booed Suarez before today. Um, I even said me and Gordon had, had the conversation after the last match that when Suarez celebrated, at home, it's a huge goal. He didn't go above and beyond to embarrass Liverpool, but in these recent comments and just how he played today, just being chippy and just uh, taking dives and trying to get calls, he should be better than that. But uh, seeing those, well, you know, like I said, Phil taking off after 60 and Suarez really not being a factor, uh, that just adds another level of sweetness to this win. Uh, what is your guys' thoughts? Yeah, I actually, I'm going to have to steal this from from uh, one of the Facebook pages I've been following. But uh, good on Suarez for keeping his word and uh, not celebrating at all at Anfield because he didn't get to do that. So can you really fault the guy for for coming in and trying to do his best? But, yeah, I, honestly, it's, the whole the whole Barcelona setup kind of bothered me. I, I talked about it in our last pod um, after the first game and just – the waving of the cards after every foul, uh, just kind of the, the dirtiness that they play with. I mean, there was a couple of handballs, and then they act like nothing's going on, and then one of our guys goes down for a little bit and actually requires attention, and and they're you know right in the rest face, um, and it was really annoying me, and I wasn't sure if it was really annoying me in the first game because we were down three nothing, uh, or if it was it was just. You know, one of the things that I was just uh, upset at them that we were down and losing, but it bit them this time. I really think that they they had already walked out of there with the Champions League final in their back pocket um, in their minds when they walked out of the field, and they never got it going. But yeah, Suarez uh, definitely. I he he didn't really disappoint me today too much because he didn't do anything, but uh, some of the comments he made were definitely boiling my blood and I think maybe if he put one in if he put the only one in or whatever that that sent us out I think I would have had a different thought about it the hell you want to jump in with a thought um I mean I don't really have anything else to add except that you know he said he wasn't going to celebrate at Anfield and he didn't <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's but I, I echo uh, Gordon's sentiment but Especially when we, when we went up 4-0, I was in that last 10 minutes, I'm like, please, for the love of God, anybody but him. <laughs> and um, and how it spun back around, it were messy, you know, had that free kick and it, the wall shot it down, which is uh, just how it's funny how things go in full circles. Or, you know, last week he converts that free kick. This week the wall, you know, the, they shift a little bit, whatever, and they block it. Um, and one thing I didn't understand, and I don't know, there – I have to maybe watch it back, but in the first half, I think it was after we scored, it seemed like Barcelona had a breakout. Um, they were like four on one or four on two or whatever. It was Messi, Suarez, and yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. And Messi tried to back heel, or I don't know if, the, you know, if it was Bill Shankly's ghost that jumped in and knocked that ball off his foot. But they were going in, and you thought for sure it was a goal, just the way it set up. And then the ball comes shooting back out of the box, and I'm watching that like, you know, was that them just trying to be too fancy with it? Um, and not only that, I have to rewatch it back, but the, that was the moment I said, there, maybe there's just something here tonight that, you know, they probably convert that goal nine out of ten times. No, he and was that ball just fancy jumped with it. That's what that was. He was trying to be fancy with it, get past one guy, make like another freaking messy highlight goal kind of thing, because. He could have taken the shot. He was wide open, but he tried to get past one more guy so he can kind of like roll into an empty net and it would be another messy classic. And it 
it kind of blew up on his face. And I think at the time, I guarantee you he's taking that shot if it's the end of the game. He's not trying to take one more dribble uh, when shit hit the fan. He would take that shot. But at that time, kind of like Gordon says, I think they figured, nah, this is already a done deal anyway. So, you know, he was kind of going for the fancy. I feel like that's what it was. He was just trying to be... More fancy than he should be. He could have easily finished that. I mean, he was wide open with the goal right in front of him. All right, fair enough. Yeah, so I, it was just one of the things where I was half, you know, one eye on the TV at that point because I'm like, oh, they're, he's going to make the right pass. And then next thing you know, the ball's out. I'm like, what, how, you know, you're speechless is, you know, for the best player in the world, um, the, the bottle that is just, it was another, just another thing that goes into this match. Um, so, kind of, I don't, I don't believe in um, trophies for second place or you know being just maybe you deserve something because how well you played. But with this way the season has gone in the Premier League with us in City, um, and at this point it looks like you know we're be, being realistic. We're probably going to lose the league by one point. Um, is today kind of a uh, kind of a a makeup for not being able to win the league? You know, it's almost like the soccer gods looked down upon us and said, "You know what? You're gonna have 97 points. You're gonna lose by City by to City by one point. You're gonna come back today and you're gonna win four nothing." Um, you guys, you know, kind of take solace in that that or solstice in that that uh, now we have a chance to win the Champions League considering it looks like the uh, Premier League is out of our grasp, barring something unforeseen. And the way today goes, who knows, maybe something crazy happens at the weekend. But uh, just, you know, the way it looks like the league's going to shake out and then we get the um, we get the result today, is that kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a good feeling to take away from this year? Nobody wanted to take a bite on that one. Uh, <laughs> I think, I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, there is no, you know, second place trophy. And obviously we want this team to win. And, you know, like you go all the way to the end, no trophies and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, our lives don't change a whole lot apart from the bragging rights and the joy we get from our team winning and the opposite of it from when our team loses. And I was thinking about this when, you know, over the weekend when, you know, when Leicester scored and I was like, you know, then I was watching Leicester play and life was back to normal. And it was just like, you know, so I thought to myself, you know, it doesn't really affect your day to day life of what happens, but this is kind of like why you root for a team. This is kind of like why you watch the game. The, and I feel like this year's team has given so many ridiculous moments and days like today. I don't recall a season where I've had five, six, seven, maybe even more, as I think more, I can probably come up with more dates, where I've lost my voice, I've been shaking from joy. I mean, I mean, it's been so many crazy games and crazy moments and days like today from this team. It's kind of like hard not to be proud of them regardless of what happens. And this is kind of like why, you know, that's kind of like the joy you get. I mean, the it's hard to explain to someone who is not into sports or doesn't follow a team and stuff like that, why, you know, we get so invested in it. But it's for like days like today and regardless of what happens i, I mean if they lose the final they lose the you know the premier league by a point or whatever i mean the joy we all felt today and we still do i mean everybody has crack voices on this podcast so i don't know how this is going to sound at the end of the day but <laughs> you know it's you know that's you can, nobody can kind of like take that away and that was like you know that's why we kind of like watch it so i mean to go back to what you're saying i think like I say, if we got a positive score from today, I was still going to be content and happy with this team and happy with the season, knowing, you know, the, you know we're on an upwards full speeds as a team, as a club. But obviously, this makes your season keep going. you got to figure we have till the end of the month, so you're going to have Firmino back, you're going to have have Salah back, all these people that we were like, they close the season while their season just got extended. I mean, even Klopp was saying, you know, he's going to get to have a training camp with these guys longer than he has, you know, during summer. Um, 
So I think it just kind of like makes the season go further, hopefully get a trophy to justify it. But personally, even without a trophy, even if we didn't, even if we just lost, you know, one, two, one or something like that today, I feel like this is one of those seasons that I will not forget just because it's been so many days like today where at the end of the game, I'm freaking exhausted. I'm exhausted right now. I feel like I played like three games. And it's, from, you know, like, just, like, from that, like, joy and stuff like that. And, like I say, I can think of at least six, seven days, and I don't think I've ever had that in one season, so many days in one season. I mean, I can only recall so many great games where I, like, after the game, just, like, collapse on the couch, like, you know, I got my ass kicked. But, you know, this year has been full of them. So, you know, just got to love this team and just, like, enjoy it because uh, I think, it, you know, it doesn't come very often, but it, with as young as this team is, I mean, the trophies will eventually come. We just got to enjoy uh, the team we have and the team we love. Was that too philosophical for everybody? Or? No, you're, no, you're <laughs> not. Uh, go ahead. You want to expand on this sauce at all? I'm going lots of... Uh less of that and more spiritual. Um, if the ghost of Shankly is still uh, wandering around, maybe he can head south and make it to the game before uh, before Sunday and maybe play some defense for Brighton this weekend. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, but- do you guys think, by the way, in terms of how this affects this weekend? You know, you were talking about, you know, we might like lose one point or whatever, but I mean, it's almost, I would almost worry that this is too high of a high. Wouldn't you think so? Um, I think maybe, that, but go ahead, go ahead, Hill. I mean, I think that, you know, yesterday deflated so much of the high that we had been on all season. I mean, this team has taken us so far. They've been so consistent. It's been such a strange feeling to be able to watch them. And the last couple of weeks have been like, other than, you know, in January when we played City, it was like the first time that I'd ever been really nervous all season. I mean, there'd been like nerve wracking moments in games or things like that, but they've been so consistent. They've been so, um, I mean, they've been, you know, with City in the league week after week you know, breathing down their necks. Um, and I feel like, you know, there, yeah, you know, earlier, like there's no trophy for second place, but we're breaking records, you know, right behind them. And I feel like, you know, there's, we can be proud of them and stuff, but like going into this weekend, um, you know, yeah, obviously we we're going to be kind of deflated because it's all going to hang on, another team's performance whether or not we can get the trophy and so now I feel like you know a little bit of that is back in our hands as far as whether or not we can get some silverware this year you know like which is what we all feel like we deserve you know for the performance that this team has put forward um you know we're not gonna get a prize for second place we're not gonna get a prize for being the third highest point scorer in the league and so being able to go back and have another go at this final and get that that silverware, I actually think it's it's going to be really great. I feel like we're going to be able to go into the weekend um, against Wolves, which is probably going to be a, a pretty you know um, you know difficult game. I don't know who we're going to have available, so um, I think that this this is the best thing that you know um, for 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 securing that that only one loss for the season and and going forward um i think that it's it's great yeah i i agree i think it's for um the mental makeup of the team and you know you saw saw on the bench today with his never give up shirt and bobby and you know for them to not have a part in this had we lost today and then you know depending on how this weekend goes you know, whether Mo can come back and play or not. I think, especially for Mo, because he got taken out last year of the Champions League in the final. And then for him to miss this leg of it, he knew how much it meant. Um, I just think on a personal level, like for those guys who have been hurt and they haven't got a chance to really play in this last 
week or so, and they put their heart on the line the whole year. For them to have that last shot, you know, if we, especially if the results don't fall their way on this weekend. But for Bobby, Mo, guys like that, Ox, um, to be able to yeah. go out and play in the Champions League and be able to actually have a part and be like, all right, you know, we're we're going to be full strength, it looks like, um, and be able to have a full squad, hopefully, the whole time. Mm-hmm. It, it's uh, it's it's nice for those guys. It's sure for them how, you know, we've always, like, to be able to go out and actually um, put their – Put our full team out and see what we can do. Like last year, we said, you know, we kind of got screwed because all of us hurt early. So we never really had that chance. And, uh, you know, we got hurt this time, and but now he's going to be able to play. And for those guys to go out and be like, you know what? We bust our balls all season. We get a chance in the, uh, in the, in the last game of the year to win the biggest trophy in Europe. And yeah, it's not to, you know, we all said all year that. It'd be nice to win a Premier League, but if not, shit, the Champions League isn't nothing to scoff at. Um, so for those guys to be able to go out and play a part in that when they put such forth an effort all year, um, it's almost poetic justice. Like we've said, this whole season's about things coming full circle, and it looks just like another chance to be able to do that. I mean, I get I get pretty emotional thinking about how Ox was such like an, a, an integral part of getting us – to the final of the Champions League last season, and you know maybe he's gonna get to play in the final this season. That's that's pretty incredible. That's pretty crazy, and I'm I'm so excited to be able to see that. Actually, we might also see Ox this weekend too. Klopp was saying basically because I, I was kind of shocked to see him not even on the bench today. I did not realize that you know like he had like a slight muscle issue and they wanted to play it safe. So I'm actually thinking. Especially after the game these guys played. I mean, that was a taxing game. Those guys did a lot of running today, especially in midfield. So I think he might get a start uh, at least some definitely a lot of minutes uh, playing this weekend. And yeah, I never thought of that. But that is a good point, Hillary, that it is awesome for that kid to be able to play in the final now. Yeah, maybe even some redemption for Salah um, if he uh, he gets to play that full 90 minutes and, and show us what he could have done against Real because I know we've said on this podcast before, I really think it would have been a different game uh, had Salah stayed on the field. Not saying we would have won, but um, we definitely had him on, on their heels in the beginning. But going back to the initial question, um, there's always a chance for a hangover, especially after something this big. and uh, like you were saying, this taxing on the players, there's always that when you step back into Premier League action and it's just against Wolves, um, there, there's a chance for that hangover. But uh, I don't see it coming. I think this last game is going to be a celebration of the season. Um, they're just going to go out there and have fun. And when we have fun, we just roll over teams. I think the crowd's going to be in it. I think everybody that's in the crowd on Sunday are going to wish they were part of the action tonight. And I'm, I think that they're going to be the ones that are going to try and make the atmosphere as raucous, if not more raucous, and just really celebrate the the team as a whole and what we've accomplished this season, even if we don't get anything out of it. So I I I, I see no problems. Obviously, we got to be careful because um, Wolves are definitely going to want to take as many points as possible off of us just to definitely secure their European place. But um, I just think we're going to be having too much fun. Our mood's going to be too big for this. Yeah, no, I tend to agree at this point. Um, even going into today, being down 3 nothing and whatnot, and with the city result, you're almost playing with house money. You have nothing to lose as a player. Um, you have to play tight. You have to go out there and play your game, and if things fall right, you have a today. You have a game like today, and um, you know, and you can't control. And that's the nice thing is going into this weekend is I'm sure we'll talk about it on a uh, preview podcast, but, you know, you – don't know what the result is. So you can just go out there and play your game. And like, I woke up today and I looked at it and was like, all right, worst case scenario is we have 180 minutes of football to left to play this season. Best case, we, we pull a result out, out of our ass and we make the final. But the way this team played all year um, with the heart and the last minute goals and like Tim was saying, six, seven, eight, nine matches this year where you kind of write it off and then 
but you know, boom, Pickford Pickford has little hands and Origi scores and you know, it's just the whole year, you know, whether we win a league or not, it's it's a year full of memories and I I wouldn't have it any other way. This is like how Tim was saying, this is what the sport's about and uh quick tangent it so my dad doesn't watch football at all he and he, but he called me this morning and was like so how's this have to happen i'm like well you know we win if we tie three three it's extra time if it's four nothing we win if they score we have to get you know the away goal and he called me on the way home and it was like i turned it on to three minutes and that was exciting and he could feel he goes when you tie the game he goes liverpool he goes i don't know much about soccer at all but um the feel of the match felt that if it, the next team was going to score, it was going to be Liverpool. And I think that's what even, you know, somebody who doesn't watch soccer at all other, and hear nothing about it other, you know, from us, and maybe you guys have family members the same way, they tune in and they see this, they say, damn, that was exciting. And he's like, you know, they were all lined up, they were singing, and he's a huge Penn State football fan. So he goes, it's almost like, you know, the players line up at the end of the game and they sing the alma mater to the student section and it's back and forth. And, that's what today felt like. It felt like a culmination of we've been there for them all year. They've been there. They've been there for us all year, and that's what it's about. Um, I, I have no other words other than that. It's just been one hell of a ride. Um, hopefully, it goes our way Sunday. If not, we have June first in the final against Ajax for Tottenham. Um, but to have that result at home today. It's just it's a it's a great bond to see, and you know, Klopp's on. You know, Klopp said uh, Milner's crying after the match, and you can even hear in Klopp's post game remarks, his voice is cracking. He doesn't know what to say. He drops an f bomb. He goes, "Oh, you know, ten after ten, children should be asleep." And it, it's just it's an un, it's unbelievable um, what this team has accomplished this year, and. I, I, I'm I'm lost. I mean, it's just it's one of those things where you cannot you cannot write the script in Hollywood for a movie. It's it's real life. Um, it's the best reality show we have going. And uh, I don't know with that. I, I'm I'm out of material. I don't, I don't know what else to say. If you guys want to chime in, uh, feel free. But I'm 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 spent emotionally. Um, I'm looking forward to this weekend. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm I just don't know what. I mean, go ahead, guys. You take it away. I'll just I'll just add that uh, my dad said fuck today, and uh, in the 20, 28 years that I've been alive, I've never heard the man swear a day in my life. <laughs> when you when you messaged that, I would just die. <laughs> I would just die and laughing. <laughs> he, he kept saying that he didn't he didn't want to watch the last ten minutes. He couldn't watch the last, last ten minutes, and just uh, yeah. So I know that it means so much to him. Um, and it just, just, it means a lot to everybody that watched it. And, and it really, it comes full circle when you see those, those final images of the players arm in arm singing to the cop, the cop singing back to them. That just shows you this is so much more than just a sport. Um, we're, we're all in it together. And it's, it's Liverpool Football Club. That's why we love it. Yeah, I mean, if we're telling family stories, like I say, my brother, who, you know, is a United fan. Well, you can't pick your family, unfortunately. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean, even he was like, man, that is so impressive. And he's been actually, he was at the game in Istanbul, uh, the Champions League final. Uh, so, he's seen that comeback. So, I, why he's still a United fan and not converted yet is beyond me. But even he was saying, like, it is such an amazing accomplishment to do it and i mean there's a lot of screaming so i have to watch this freaking final on the laptop i couldn't watch the final last year i was on a soccer field so but anyway i was watching the game upstairs yelling and screaming you know pounding on everything he just lost the voice and everything and i run downstairs and the dog was just freaking out because he's used to the goal screaming but he usually gets a snack afterwards and I literally <laughs> emptied. And so I go to the garage and I tell my wife and I'm like, they made it. I can't believe the shit. You know, it's like 4-0. They made it. And she's like, can you go take care of the dog, please? Because he's spazzing out from your screaming. So.
Well, I'll just say that, that I love that he gives his dog a treat when he screams. <laughs> uh, yeah, de- definitely uh, pause, uh, Pavlov's law right there and a positive reinforcement for the dog. Um, yeah. Well, I'm done. Hillary, what your final thoughts? We're going to wrap this up. Um, I uh, I haven't had a chance to look at all of the post-game interviews and stuff like that, but I did get to see um, some clips from um, Arsene Wenger before the game talking and then uh, Jose Mourinho after the game talking. And I was so uh, blown away by the fact that Jose Mourinho basically said, you know, he wasn't discrediting the players and their incredible role in the game, but he was saying that it's Klopp, you know, it's his mentality. It's all about Jurgen bringing the hope, bringing that mentality of, um, I think it's like his kind of like the romantic way that he views the game and just this idealism that he infuses into the players and stuff like that. And it, it permeates to us too, you know, and so I just think that there's this this crazy thing going on where we we can't explain it but we just we feel so much about um these games and these players and all this stuff that's happening and going into this game you know we're like oh we could be we could be proud you know as long as we keep a clean sheet and we you know we we don't you know have a have the game like how it was in Barcelona and stuff like that and and to come out of it just completely victorious I mean, it just, I feel like it represents everything that this team stands for, you know, and just that entire mentality of, of, you know, if we, if we play, if we play the game a certain way, if we, if we do it a certain way, we're, we're going to get it, we're going to, we're going to come through. And, um, you know, without our talisman, without Mosala, without Bobby Firmino, without like one of our biggest signings, we still managed to come through. And so it's just, it's just crazy. Like, it's such an incredible feeling to be back in the final totally unexpected and it's just going to be such a crazy crazy high going into that game i uh, uh you know 3 weeks away so um yeah and i think the uh the best visual to see is if anybody who's listening gets a chance go on and watch uh watch the team singing you'll, you'll never walk alone and in, in that you'll see Klopp, Armin Armin van dyke You'll see assistants who we haven't seen all year. Um, Minule, who's taken a backseat to uh, Allison, but has not spoken out about not being a number one keeper. Um, Mourinho, who hasn't played at all. Brewster, who has his first call today. Woodburn, who has a feature all year. And everybody is arm in arm. Sturge, who's probably out the door at the end of the season, played a few minutes tonight. But they're all arm in arm singing the words that you'll never walk alone. And that just shows you the the family mentality that um this club has. And um just, just the the mentality that Klopp has. Um and he's instilled into this club. And uh it, it's something that even if you're not a huge football fan and you don't get it, you'll get goosebumps. And uh, that's just that's how this club is. It's family. Um, so with that, it looks like uh, maybe Tim and Gordon dropped off. Uh, Hillary, last, last thoughts before we talk again before this weekend? No, I, I just have to agree with that last line. You know, um, the the this means more video and everything where where Jurgen says, you know, they they have you know their fans but we are a family and that's that's totally how it feels at the end of the day win or lose you know you'll never walk alone uh perfect way to end this um so that for uh gordon and tamuchin and hillary um hooch uh what what a hell of a day what a day to be a liverpool fan um like us on spotify and iTunes and YouTube, and hopefully we will soon be on iHeartRadio. Um, we will see you guys and talk to you guys before the match at the weekend at the Wolves. Uh, with that, up the Reds. Up the Reds. Thanks, Luch. All right. Cheers, guys. <laughs>